Today on the Possibility Mom Live, I'm going to attempt to recap 2.5 days of live content from my event, Wealth Without Guilt Live, that happened in Toronto this time last week. I'm going to attempt to do it in 20 minutes. Wish me luck. Hey, I hosted my very, very first live conference, and it was so much fun. There was a lot of learning. <laughs> oh, boy. There was a lot of learning. There was a steep uh, learning curve just in terms of things like making sure, you know, you had enough ink in the printer and what to do when the helium balloons deflate and all that kind of jazz. There were unexpected twists and turns that we did not anticipate. And I'm going to share with you candidly that 60 seconds before the event, I legit thought about canceling it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. 60 seconds before the event. Literally, when the doors were meant to open, I stood there in a moment of panic and said to myself, we should just cancel. I'm very glad that we did not. But that just peels the curtain back a little bit on some of the lessons learned and the mental drama that occurred in Lisa Canning's brain. I do want to just start out with a word of thanks. There were so many people who made the event possible and successful and that I just really want to say a great big thank you first of all to Stephanie Donahue who was my partner in all of this and her daughter Vanessa who traveled outside the United States for the very first time my hosts uh Kintour College and the PEV uh community promotion of education and values Rhonda Wood was extremely gracious. We had just an incredible location for a Catholic mom. I really want to encourage you to learn more about that organization. It was just a delight to be in a really classy location with a chapel on site where I felt very safe. I hope that my attendees felt very safe. For some of the women coming to Wealth Without Guilt Live, it was the very first time they had traveled on an airplane alone or had traveled with a baby alone. And so I really just wanted to make sure that it was a very safe environment and felt as safe as possible. Um, there are so many people that I really want to thank my speakers, both in person and virtual. I had a surprise guest, Stephanie Weinert. Stephanie Weinert was a surprise piece of content in the afternoon on the third day, we did not tell anyone that she was going to be speaking. That was just a really, really fun surprise. All right. So, so many people, honestly, I for sure have forgotten to name some of them. My parents came. That was adorable. Mom and Dad Santos, Lola and Lolo, they came and they cleaned up on Saturday night because I knew I would be so tired and I knew that my team would be so tired. And so I was like, Mom and Dad, can you please just come? And they are, my goodness, workhorses. And they know what to do. They've run so many events, you know. So for them, it is just totally nature to roll up their sleeves and just they know how to clean up a church hall. They are like experts at it. So what I'm going to do today is attempt to summarize 2.5 days of content in approximately 20 minutes. I'm going to make it like a challenge for myself to summarize everything that we just absorbed. And oh my word, there were there were things that I expected at Wealth Without Guilt Live so I knew that there would be easy pieces of content for me to create and produce and present, but there were some really emotionally challenging portions of the conference for me personally that were, again, very vulnerable to share and I think very helpful based on the feedback. So 
we're going to attempt to do this. We're going to attempt. But before we get into the content, I want to share with you, if you missed out on the event and you wish you could have come, you can access the replays. The replay is available and the price of the replay is going to go up. We are going to edit it and make it clean. So meaning we're going to take out all the portions where we started late. We're going to take out the portions where, um, you know, you just had to wait around for us to start and all the little transitions. I had a videographer in the room as well. So you're going to get different camera angles and reactions from the audience. So we're going to edit a cleaner version. And so the price of that replay is going to go up. But you can access the replay at just $97 by going to the possibilitymomconference.com slash replay and grab the unedited replay at just $97. I promise you this will be incredible value for your business. One of the pieces of feedback I got from a dear um, follower, Amanda, she was like, I know I will always get Lisa Cannon content, quote unquote. So there's content that I expect to hear from you. And even if I hear it many, many times, it is always going to be encouraging, always going to be motivating. But then there's always going to be something new, a new twist, a new turn, new speakers, new concepts that I haven't yet considered. And that was definitely true. There was some tried and true possibility mom content that you're always going to hear from me. But then there was some brand new stuff that has truly been a result of my last nine months of being here in Canada. If you've been following me for a while, you know I've lived a lot of life. I did the tally. We have lived in nine different houses in nine months time. That's a lot of moving. That's a lot of figuring stuff out. That's a lot of packing, unpacking, and cleaning. And frankly, it has been a lot on my central nervous system. At time of this recording, I can happily report that we have found a more permanent home here in Canada and I will be moving into it next week. So I'll have to kind of update you to let you know what that does to the podcast. I haven't thought that far ahead in terms of presenting something live, but at time of this recording, (laughs) we have secured a rental for longer than 30 days. And I'm very, very excited about that. But the content that I presented at Wealth Without Guilt Live did very much come from this period of trial. And so I share that with you because we have to remain hopeful. You just never know. You really don't know what the Lord is doing in your life, in your heart especially when it's hard in the moment. It takes the perspective of looking back to really understand, oh, okay, Lord, you didn't abandon me. You were there with me. You were, (laughs) this was all for me. And so let's get into it. All right. I'm going to pull up a few visual resources that are going to help me. If you are listening to this on podcast, I want to encourage you later on go and take a peek on my YouTube to just get a sense of some of the visuals that I am presenting. And here we go. Alrighty. On day one, and I'm going to actually just for fun, kind of look at the time and be like, hey, can I actually do this in 20 minutes? So I'm going to make this just a fun little challenge for myself Here we go. On day one, this is what we tackled. Here we go. Let me make sure that everything is all right. We are cool. On day one, this is what we tackled. Hold on. Sorry. Why is this? Okay. Whoop. Whoop Whoop-a-doop, boop, boop. Hold on one sec. Here we go. Day one, this is what we tackled. We tackled... The Rise of the Catholic Mom 
entrepreneur. What does this look like and what does this mean? And what I did first was define that business at its core is having an audience, having something to sell to that audience that your audience needs, and that you have a way of fulfilling that need. So for example, you are a coach who can help people with their time management, and you actually have a course or a program or a coaching package that will help people manage their time better. Or you are a rosary maker, like one of my incredible sponsors for Wealth Without Guilt Live, Knots of Grace. She creates rosaries. And the problem that she solves is beautiful rosaries for her people, both that you can put in your home as almost decor on a door or you can have in your purse. And she has the ability to fulfill. So she has, you know, she, she was able to provide 50 beautiful rosaries for my event. She can fulfill that need. Now, if you are listening to this in podcast form, I'm going to walk you through the graphic that I have on my screen. So you may not have an audience, but you have something to sell that your audience needs and you can fulfill that need. That's awesome. But where do your sales come from? You might have an audience, but you don't have something to sell and you don't have a way to fulfill that need. So you might be, in that case, an influencer. You may have built an audience because you went viral with a piece of content, for example, or what have you, but you are not currently leveraging that ability. And I say, why not? Why not leverage it? And then finally, you might be in the case where you don't have an audience, but you do have something to sell that your audience needs, but you can't currently fulfill it. Well, I would say you are just simply at the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. We all start somewhere that is very, very, very common. Everybody begins at the beginning. And so it's helpful when you can identify where you are in the journey. But at its core, this is what business is. But for the Catholic mom entrepreneur, we're adding in an, an entirely new layer, an entirely new lens. And that is a sense of mission. What I've got up on my screen here is the John Henry Cardinal Newman prayer, the mission of my life. And the phrase that I love to pull out of this is that God has created me to do some definite service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. And at the conference, I shared a very important story of how I discovered the difference in myself when I discovered that I wanted something different than my secular coaches could provide. And that it really had to deal with hustle and this sense of striving and what to do. And I go into this story very in detail. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I cried. I cried a lot at this conference. And how the impact of hustle, what that impact had on my central nervous system. In my last nine months, especially of dealing with many different things, moving so often, a child in hospital, feeling very uncertain and challenged, knowing we had discerned moving back to Canada, but not understanding why there were so many difficult elements, what this all did to my central nervous system. And what I've got on my screen right now, and we dove into this so much at this conference, is a quote from Claudine Noel, one of the members of my mastermind and a somatic coach. We carry the imprint of our experiences, both positive and negative, in our minds, bodies, and spirits. If we have wounds that have not been healed, they prevent us from seeing clearly. And I talked about our central nervous system is designed to keep us safe. And that the Catholic mom entrepreneur must understand this part, must understand what it looks like to navigate challenge and pain and trust the Lord in the process. 
what the secular world was telling me or what I was understanding from some of my secular coaches. And again, I'd say this with so much respect and reverence. I gained so much and continue to gain so much from secular coaches. But what they will not tell you is this incredibly important element, which is when it gets hard, we must trust the Lord. And that was something I remember was lacking. And of course, why would it? Of course, it's like, of course, it was going to be lacking because this was a secular container that I was in. And so here are the things that the Catholic mom entrepreneur does different. This was what we really dove into for much of this conference. The Catholic mom entrepreneur is going to discern She's going to bring to the Lord, do you want me in business? And what is the mission that I have that no one else has? She is a steward. She is a great steward of her time and her talent and her treasure. She serves. She places her audience, her people, her customers at the forefront. Her business is a place of service. And she trusts the Lord with the outcome. We talked so much about the central nervous system and what it looks like when it's scary to do that, when you are used to being self-reliant. And finally, she builds the Catholic economy. She cares about, quote unquote, voting with her wallet in a culture where so many people can be canceled. The Catholic mom entrepreneur cares about supporting businesses and causes and keeping them, quite frankly, in business because of what they purport, what they support, the values that they have. And I have an awesome pictorial graphic that I'm going to pull up that really shows what this all looks like in totality. And it looks a little something like this. I was so proud of this graphic. And of course, I had a typo when I presented this at Wealth of Don't Guilt Live. Isn't that fun? But then I was able to (laughs) change it for (laughs) day two. All right. You guys love when I have typos. Okay. It's like you love when I have typos. Here we go. So again, this is business at its core the Catholic mom entrepreneur is going to bring in this totally different dimension. And so if you're watching this on, um, if you're listening to this on podcast form, I want to encourage you to take out this, take a peek at this graphic on YouTube because it's a fun little image that puts it all in one spot. Okay. But what does this require? This concept of having an audience, having something to sell to your audience that they need, and you're able to fulfill this need, and then add on this other layer of discernment of being a good steward, acting from a place of service, trusting the Lord with all of it, and building the Catholic economy. What this requires is perseverance. And so in day two, we spent a significant amount of time talking about what it looks like to trust the Lord and persevere in a way that keeps us peaceful and regulated. I, I There was a very powerful exercise that I really want to encourage you to grab the replay of and watch where I had everyone in the room talk about or bring up something that they had stalled on in their business. And it was fascinating the the summary of it, if I were to summarize it, is there was a good chunk of it that was tech related. There was a good chunk of it that was sort of fear of the response that people would get. So for example, delaying emails, email was a really big one, but it was all related to delaying the disappointment or the emotion that might come from either understanding a failure or Um, yeah, getting rejected and then, and then feeling like a failure. And so what do we do with these negative emotions and time check? Okay. I've been at this for, I think 10 minutes. So I think we're going to be able to do this. I'm summarizing 2.5 days of content into 20 minutes. So 
What does it look like to persevere and trust the Lord in a way that keeps us peaceful and regulated? Remember what I said earlier, the central nervous system is designed to keep us safe. And so if you have been procrastinating on something in your business, if there is something that you repeatedly do over and over again that does not advance your business. So for example, you don't hit send on that email or you, or you are very, very um, reticent to show up online. You don't show up online on social media or maybe you're just really delayed in launching a product. It probably has something to do with the three things that I'm showing on my screen, which are related to delaying experiencing a negative emotion or protecting yourself from what you think is going to happen when that negative emotion shows up. So what are the things? What are the three things? When we feel the fear or the inadequacy or the imposter syndrome, and we realize we are protecting ourselves from something, this is what we need to do. Number one, we need to feel. We need to regulate, not repress. Memorize this phrase, regulate, not repress. Then we need to master the skill of breathing through that feeling instead of pushing past it. I use this example that it's kind of like being in a car and pushing through it is as if you're trying to drive through a massive snowstorm with your parking brake on, you know? It can feel, it's possible to push through pain. And I told that story at Wealth Without Guilt Live, lots of my personal stories of what it was like for me to just push as opposed to what we want you to do is breathe through the pain. One of the things about me being in the Guiding Star Project as its president is I'm learning so much about birth and babies and maternal care and the language that that industry uses. And a really big thing is not pushing through pain, but breathing through pain. So it's a skill. And we spent a significant amount of time on day two learning skills for breathing, not pushing through pain. And only then, and only then can we move in a way that's going to be sustainable. So again, I'm going to say it one more time. If you have been reluctant to launch, if you have noticed you've not pulled out the paper to write that book, if you have noticed that you have not done the thing that has been on your New Year's resolution list or on your to-do list every single week and you just continue to not do it, to not do it, and not do it. It's probably because these three things are not present in your life currently. Or you might be kind of how I was where I was learning from these secular coaches that you just had to crush your dreams that you just had to like never listen to your emotions, that you had to kind of bury them and put them aside and care more about the goal and more about the vision and more about the impact than your emotions. And there is some truth to those things, meaning, yes, like you cannot just focus on your emotions all the time. However, if you don't do it in a way that sets your central nervous system up for success, trust me, your central nervous system is going to set it for you and you are going to shut down. So this is so important. And what is the result of doing this again and again and again? It's an increase in hope. This is another thing that I want you to commit to memory. What is the result of feeling your emotions, regulating them, not repressing them? And then learning the skills of how to breathe through them. These are skills that we taught at Wealth Without Guilt Live. Somatic coaching. I had my internal family systems therapist, Virginia Charlesworth, literally coach me or do therapy, I guess, on me on stage. And wow, it was a vulnerable moment. Don't think I'm going to actually put that one publicly on the internet. 
I'm going to just keep that one kind of, you know, <laughs> a little bit more hidden for a smaller group to see. And Stephanie Weinert's interview on how she has navigated infant loss and all the things that have come as a result of grief and the detachment she's had to learn and her ability to navigate and accept that sometimes you have to just be instead of do. My goodness, we learn this in very palpable, very tangible ways at Wealth Without Guilt Live. What happens is it increases your ability to hope and an increase in hope never, ever fails. Because what do we read in scripture? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Another really important component that we discuss at Wealth Without Guilt Live is navigating if you actually need to work. Because one of the things that came up, and this came up very much on day three in terms of running a profitable business, in terms of the drive needed, like what is your incentive for making this money, is gaining clarity on why you actually want to be doing this. And I created this interesting graphic here. Again, I want to encourage you to come take a look at it over on YouTube later on, is answering these three questions. Do you need to work? Do you want to work? And do you have the skills to work? So let's unpack this a little bit. And again, similar to the definition of a business, I, I, I take you through these different permutations some women need to work. Up until very recently, my husband was not the primary breadwinner. Like he was not um, bringing in, there's been many times in our marriage actually where we've kind of taken turns being the primary breadwinner. And up until very recently, if I did not work, our mortgage did not get paid. Like it was just that simple. <laughs> so some women need to work. Some women want to work. I remember a coach telling my husband who was feeling challenged by the, he, he, he was feeling bad about, um, as if it was a burden, my needing to work. And the coach was like, can you actually picture Lisa not working? Like, even if she didn't need to work, can you actually picture her not working on something? I have a desire. It is like in me. I love working. I love entrepreneurship. I love creating. Even if I won the lottery or something and was fully funded my whole life, I I, I just, I think <laughs> I would want to do something with my skills to be a good steward of them. And so for some women, they want to work. And then maybe you don't have the skills. So this first graphic I'm showing here is you maybe need to work because you're, you're um, either your husband doesn't make enough or um, you uh, just, well, that's really it. Like you, you don't have some other source of funding, right? Um, but you don't have the skills. So an answer to that is you join me in the Wealth Without Guilt Academy coaching or mastermind because the skills can be learned. But let's look at another example. Maybe you don't need to work. There are some women in my community where their husband makes more than enough or they have been very fortunate and they have sold a home or they have been very strategic with their investments and they have enough that they do not need uh, employment. So for people like that, you may not need to work, but you may want to work because you love the feeling. You're feeling very called. You've discerned that you are meant to work and you may have the skills. So when you are in this bucket, what we need to do is ensure that you are really clear on why, because it can be very tempting to be like, well, I don't really need to make this money, so I'm just not going to host the webinar. Or, well, I'm feeling really lazy and I just want to not show up on social media, and so I'm just not going to. And so you've got to get really clear on what is your why, and maybe it's because you want to support an incredible cause. Maybe it's because you want to fund your children's Catholic education. Maybe you want to be able to support a teacher in a Catholic school so they are being paid a competitive wage. 
So you've got to get really clear on your why. If you do not need to work, if you do not need the income that comes from work, you've got to get really, really clear on why then. What is motivating you to do it? And then finally, maybe you need to work, and there's a fair number of people who fall into this category in my community. You may need to work. You may have medical bills. You may have um, other, other pressing needs that really your business could fund and fuel. And you have the skills. You actually are really good at it. But Virginia Brown, she shared this at Wealth Without Guilt Live at various points in the conference, both in a panel as well as in her presentation. Sometimes she really doesn't want to. Sometimes the sacrifice that it requires is not pleasant, is not her favorite. And so what I would suggest then, if that is you, you learn your motivations through M Code coaching and other various kinds of coaching that we talked about a, a great deal. Your unique design, Erin Ingold shared with us. You figure out what those ideal conditions are for you. And that's what you can use to motivate you when you really just aren't feeling it. And so I presented at the conference various ways that one can journey with me if you understand which of those pockets you fall or one of those buckets that you fall into. And the final thing that we covered at Wealth Without Guilt Live was what this looks like in terms of making your business profitable, ensuring that you can do this in a sustainable method, and how do you market a business sustainably. And that is where I was so delighted to have members of my mastermind present. Virginia Braun presented on profit and how to have a business that takes care of your family, that your family can rely on. We heard from Jessica Castillo, who shared what it looks like for a entrepreneur to be in high performance mode. And that is so different than being in burnout mode. And then we heard from Joanne Gillis about how a podcast can have a sustainable method of marketing for your business. Claudine Noel shared somatic coaching uh, strategies, how to get your physical body in line with um, in a healthy way so that your central nervous system can actually support you in doing this work. Liliana Contreras gave us some motivational moments. Tessa Wienink from um, uh, Build a Country Home, she sang a beautiful, inspiring song to close out our conference. And uh, I'm just so grateful for the, the, the truly, it was a very diverse roundup of content. Virginia Charlesworth, my IFS therapist, she, it was, that was raw and real. She shared with us internal family systems, sort of 101 and what that looks like, and then demonstrated it on me. Laura Rowland presented on the M code to really help people understand what gets them out of bed. Erin Ingold talked about unique design and your ideal conditions based on your temperament, again, to help support you to move when perhaps you don't have the desire to. And then, of course, Stephanie Weinart was our surprise guest on Saturday, and she shared with us just tender, tender, tender. You know, I don't know if she's really shared a lot of her business experience publicly. That was a really incredible piece of content. And then my beautiful business partner in my mastermind, Stephanie Donahue, shared a very touching story of how we met and how she was seeking a more Catholic community, a more Catholic container in which to do business in. And she really felt like giving up because she hadn't found one. And so we shared the story at Wealth Without Guilt Live about what that all looked like, how she reached out to me, how she still continued to feel doubt and reticent and wasn't really sure. But we really unpacked why she stayed in it. We unpacked how she trusts the Lord in business. 
and why she is so motivated to build the Catholic economy. And forgive me if I have forgotten someone. Oh, we praise the Lord. My goodness, we praise the Lord. Kathleen and Jesse LeBlanc, at the end of day two, after we had done so much work on our systems, <laughs> so much work on our somatic systems, looking at our parts, examining and getting really raw about the reasons why we might not move in our business and really bringing things up to the surface that potentially need healing. It was an incredible way to end that day in praise and prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament and really just laying it all down. There was a song that destroyed me. Absolutely, absolutely destroyed me. There were two songs. One was Permission. That is an original song. And you can actually peek over on my Instagram. I recorded almost the whole praise and worship session. So you can go at Lisa Canning and listen to it on my Instagram. But there was another song about preferences. And if you listen to the recording, it's towards the end. I have an audible, oh boy. I literally say, oh boy, based on the text of the first line of the song. <gasps> and it was something to the effect of, Lord, when this is not as I pictured, help me, something like that. Like when it's not what I pictured, help me accept it anyway. It was a gut punch, that one. Oh my goodness, gut punch that song. And I think, my friends, I did it. In 20 minutes, that is what was discussed at Wealth Without Guilt Live. I'm very grateful for the experience because I had to kind of show and tell, meaning I had to, in real time, live out exactly what I was talking about, meaning I really wanted to cancel it. Like my system was so frustrated <laughs> by some of the challenges. Like there were just like normal challenges that come from when you do something from the for, for the first time. Normal, totally normal challenges. And I was so petrified of failing and, and being embarrassed, if I'm being really honest. I was petrified of being embarrassed. There was a moment where there was no one in the room. And I was like, well, my mastermind is here. At least there'll be those women and I can do this for them. But if you can imagine for the high achiever, who had put in so much time and effort and energy, I was like, I don't want to fail at this. So I would rather cancel it than fail. But of course, I had to do exactly what we're talking about here. I had to honor the feeling, not repress it. I had to do the thing hand on heart. These are some of the strategies that we went over. And I had to just sort of feel the feeling, okay, you're afraid. This is fear that you can withstand fear. You can withstand fear with the Lord. You can 100% withstand this fear. Now, was I actually going to cancel it 60 seconds before? Was I actually going to lock the doors? No, obviously, right? But that feeling was very, very real and was very, very present. And yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so that is my recap of 2.5 days of content from Wealth Without Guilt Live. I really want to encourage you to grab the replay. And like I mentioned, you can do that at the possibilitymomconference.com slash replay. But I also want to remind you that I've got another opportunity for you to journey with me if you were unable to make it. Maybe $97 is not in your budget at this exact moment. I want to invite you to something that Stephanie Donahue and I are going to be doing together, and that is the Craft Your Six-Figure Blueprint for Catholic Mom Entrepreneurs. This is something that we did back in April, 
and it was so much fun. And we've decided to do it again. It is five days of targeted coaching to build a six-figure business. Whether you have already made money in your business or you are still at the very, very beginning stages, I want to encourage you to come to this event every day between October 30th and November 3rd, you are going to watch Stephanie and I take you through five days of powerful content. When we did this in April, it was such a success. People loved it so much because there was a combination, I think the feedback was that there was a combination of tactics and then straight up live coaching from both myself and Stephanie. And really, we could package a lot of this up into a very powerful course. I mean, it's a lot of what we offer inside of the Wealth Without Guilt Mastermind, inside of the Wealth Without Guilt Academy and coaching. We're offering quite a bit of a playbook for how to build a six-figure business. And so even if you have only made a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, even if it's super overwhelming for you, I want to encourage you to come and join us. We are going to have so much fun and you are going to get a sneak peek essentially at what we teach our members in our mastermind experience that um, so many women uh, were present in at Wealth Without Guilt Live. It was so much fun to meet some of these women like in real life. So Jessica Castillo has been in my world from Germany. She came for this conference. I mean, that is just so much fun. So October 30th through November 3rd, excuse me, wait, 3rd? Yeah, 3rd. November 30th through November, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm getting all tongue-tied. October 30th through November 3rd. Join us for this very powerful five-day experience where we are going to teach you how to create a six-figure business blueprint. And this experience is just $19. So maybe $97 is not a reality for you right now. Come and join us at just $19 five days of content and live coaching that I think you are going to love, 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 love. I need to say one final shout out, and that is to Laura Ann Smid. Laura Ann is just amazing. She is a photographer that I have been following, and I'm trying to remember exactly how we met. It, I think it was through the Catholic Christian Outreach Community, uh, which is kind of like Focus up here in Canada. I, I just love her. And it just so happened that she was able to make it out to our event to take incredible photos of my mastermind and of the event. And here is one sweet little peek of my mastermind members who were all present. Again, Jessica there is on the end from Germany, all the way from Germany, holding the balloons. Liliana Contreras from Toronto. There's me in the purple jacket. Stephanie joined us all the way from um, Washington State. Forgive me. Washington State, I'm pretty sure. Kathleen LeBlanc, who is in the greater Toronto area. Tessa Weening came in all the way from Alberta. And then Virginia Braun came in from the United States. We welcome new mastermind member uh, at the event from the United States. And we've got lots of room for women to join us. We had a beautiful dinner in Toronto at this classy restaurant called Italy. It was just so much fun, honestly. I had so, so, so much fun, and I'm just so grateful to Laura Ann that she was able to take photos like that. There were some, let me see if I can pull this up really quickly. Now that I, I'm I'm proud of myself that I got through all that content in 20 minutes, let me see if I can, okay, here. One of the perks of joining us in our mastermind is that um, you got photos 
with the incredible Laura Ann. And so let me see if I can pull up some of the awesome, awesome headshots that she took of our people. Honestly, like I was like, how did I get this lucky? Okay, look at these shots. If I can figure out how to present, present so full screen. Look at these incredible shots of my women. Look at this. Aren't these fun? Oh my gosh. Like, look how fun. Um, like it means Stephanie, like just, oh my word. Like everybody looks so beautiful. And Laura Ann has this incredible gift of really just capturing a woman's personality as well as making her feel really, really comfortable. So I'm just so grateful. There were just so many things, you know, and in close, what I'll say is, again, I had to practice what I preach, meaning I was scared. I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to look dumb. I didn't want to be embarrassed. I didn't want to, um, I have very high standards for myself and how things go. And I just had a lot of emotions to deal with. But I had to practice or I was invited by myself to practice what I preach. And that was to feel those emotions anyways, breathe through the challenge of those emotions and use all the skills that I've learned from all of the coaches, from my spiritual director, from all of the incredible people in my life that I have surrounded myself for support. And it was an incredible event that I'm just so grateful that I got to do, that I had the pleasure of doing. The final piece of feedback that just means the most to me, I think, was I had many women there that I did not know. So many women who I had not yet ever interacted with, even on my email list, like just women who were totally, totally new to me. And their feedback about the event, I think, meant the most. And it was sort of this overwhelming feeling of thank you for creating this experience where I can feel so not alone. We've lived, we do live still, and we have lived so much of our life online. And online is awesome. You know, you and I wouldn't be connecting right now if we weren't connecting online. Online makes things so possible. It's making it possible for me to be the president of a major nonprofit in the United States. Online work is awesome. But I think it makes it all the more special when you really can just sit and chat and eat and pray and just lengthy periods of time be with people and be with people who have similar drive and similar goals. This whole notion of building a Catholic economy and doing it together as Catholic women, getting all those kinds of people in the same room and truly, literally, physically linking arms was just so special. And so I am excited to do this in the future. Get ready for Wealth Without Guilt 2024, date and location TBD, but oh my word, we are going to have some fun. (sighs) My friends, until next time, don't forget that you can grab the replay and don't forget that October 30th through November 3rd, I've got another incredible event for you. Okay, I keep saying last, last thoughts, but here's the actual last, last thoughts. There has been a lot going on in the world. I think at this point, you know, you have to really be offline completely to not have heard some of the atrocities that are happening and just how really challenging. There there was one, um, I, I like to keep things very honest here on the podcast obviously, but I I don't tend to bring up things that I know are going to trigger people. Like meaning I just, I, I, I do want to be a source of light and hope here on the internet. 
And there are just so many places where you can get the real, you know, the real hard truths, the real hard facts about some of the very challenging things and truly horrific things that are happening in the world. But this one kind of is hitting a little closer to home. So where we live before we moved to Florida was a very Jewish community, um, right sort of at the north end. It's called Thornhill. So we lived in Thornhill, and it is a very densely Jewish uh, populated community. Lots of um, synagogues and Jewish schools. And there particularly was a Jewish school that was very close to where I lived. And that Jewish school had to, there there was a, a targeted attack on it and um, police had to be called. And again, just so close to home. And so I just, the contribution I want to make here, there are lots of other places where you can go for understanding the political climate, for the causes that you can donate to. But the, the, where I really want to contribute is what happens when you start to give up on hope for humanity. And really just what I want to share from my heart so sincerely today is that hope is a choice. And that trusting the Lord in times of challenge is a choice. But what the last nine months of my life have shown me, what even just navigating just some of the things I've had to recently navigate with living in so many homes and feeling very displaced and feeling not secure. Is it just doesn't serve you to give up on hope? Is it hard? Absolutely, it could be hard. Like when you're looking at like depravity, like just inhumane acts, of course, it's so easy to be like, give up on everything, give up on the world. Like there, there is no, like what is our world coming to? But choose your heart. That also produces a really hard and I would take the hard of looking for the hope, of clinging to the hope, of like literally white knuckle clinging to hope. I'd rather choose that hard than the hard of living in the darkness. And so my encouragement to you is that it's a habit. It is a habit and you can build it. You can choose hope. You can choose to trust God. You can choose to believe that there are people who are good and who will show up when people need help. So please join me in praying for peace. Please join me in um, praying for all of those who have been impacted by some of the recent world events. And if this is very challenging for you, I invite you to just turn to prayer, honestly, and also do the things that will help your mental health thrive, like putting your phone down, like limiting your news intake, like spending time, you know, just with your loved ones and in reality, like spending time in your reality. All right, my friends. Have a great rest of your Friday and we will see you next time on the Possibility Mom Live.